Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to this week's installment of Fabricator Series Segments where every single week I upload one more chapter, sometimes two, of how to build a two chassis front end which is demonstrated on this S13. So, if you are not subscribed already to the Fabricator Series YouTube channel, absolutely go down right now and push that button so you don't miss the next week's uploads. If you're not familiar with the Fabricator Series, head over right now or after this video to the Fabricator Series uh, dot com and, and there you'll find the build blogs on how to build a two chassis front end where each week there will be another episode posted and in there you can get onto the discussion of everything, ask questions, talk about it amongst everybody else and all kinds of other good stuff. There's also a lot of great stuff for you to learn while you're over there. You can also check up on facebook.com slash the fabricator series. There's always another upload, another update, something else going on and I'm also a big fan of Instagram so head over to Instagram at the dot fabricator. Check all the information below here, and I'll have all of that there. If you need to get a hold of me, send a message, drop a comment, drop me an email, do whatever you got to do, and I'll always try to get back to you. So without any further delay, here's this week's episode of How to Build a Tube Chassis Front End. You might actually be looking at this and saying, what is going on under there? The hood latch. We need something to hold this in place. Well, this is exactly what I've got. It's a temporary mounting solution that's going to place the hood latch exactly where it needs to be. Now, what I did do is I just took this setup with this just random steel that I have laying around added two iHeart gussets mounting tabs, threaded style, and I adjusted the latch all the way down and set the hood all the way down. Now at this point right here, the hood is not going to sit any lower, so we can absolutely put maximum low adjustment on the latch itself. So with a couple of these tacks in place, I'm going to put in a couple more, just to make sure it doesn't move. That is very important. So now, we can measure this up and find out exactly where our tubes need to run because I'm going to do something yet again very, very clever with this front end. So let's get these tubes mounted and measured. Alright, so my plan here is to take off of this tab and get the bend as close to that tab as possible because I don't want to weld the tab in the bend, but we need to keep this area as closed off as possible to allow as much airflow to go through as possible and not, not let much escape. I also want to decorate this a little bit with some dimple dies. So what I'm going to do is take my protractor here and I'm going to look at here where I want it to go. Now this section of the end here signifies the inside of the tube. And just as well over here, this will also be the inside of the tube. So I want to take off from here and run it right up to here. So I'm just going to hold the protractor up here, also known as an angle finder. And I'm going to place this edge right here up with this edge to signify the inside of the tube. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This edge will signify the inside of the tube. Now as I place it up here, straighten it out and get it nice and even, notice that I have an angle here at 25 degrees. So where I don't know right now is where I need to start my bend at to make sure that I get the bend past this notch on both sides. So what I'm going to do is go take a piece of scrap tube, just a dummy, bend it off at 25 degrees and make sure I mark uh, on the inside of the tube there where the bend starts in the die and then we'll set this up here take our measurements all right so what I've done on this side on over here on the driver's side is I sided straight down to see the inside of this tube is going to meet up right about where that bracket is supposed to be while keeping this edge flush with the same edge again or with the edge of where it's actually going to need to be you can see the direction in which it's going to bend upward so we're going to translate that over onto this side. So I'm going to sight straight down. And I'm going to see where this line is going to trace out onto here. 
So to make sure that I get this perfectly straight, we're gonna line up the edges. I'm gonna translate this line right onto the plate. Now notice it's actually pretty even. So there's a little bit of a variance in there that we might be able to get out of it, but that's okay. Now let's take a measure. Looks like we got seven and three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna start in the center of there, measure outward, bend them down, and get all of this filled in. Set this up. I'm gonna line this center line right here. It's a little rough, but that's gonna mark out with the center of the latch. Now, of course, just like in the tube notching video, as always, I'm gonna baseline here. I'm gonna make a face line here. Make my throat line here. Notch one, notch two. Do the same thing to the other side. Okay. Got a pretty good setup on here. Let's get some tacks down on it. Couple. securely mounted in place, we're about ready to take this hood latch off and reveal everything here. But what I do need to do before we actually get to that point is I need to add a couple more pieces in here to brace up the front. So I've taken the jig off where we actually started with to place and hold this and I've taken the tabs away from it. Now we put the latch back onto it once more to make sure that we can line these tabs up correctly. Now once again, we've got to set to the lowest possible adjustment, so that way we can always adjust up. Remember, the hood's not going to drop any lower than what it is now, as it sits with nothing to rest on. So, I'm going to set this down here, and right about where it needs to be, and I'm going to drop a couple of tack welds on it. set this up to the maximum height. Instead of the maximum low, we're going back to maximum height. I'm just going to get it kind of snug here. And then we need to do a double check to make sure that the adjustment that we have here is going to be enough to actually set our hood up and make sure that everything's set correctly. Look at that. Everything lines up right where it needs to be. That's perfect. That's exactly what we need. Okay, so now I mentioned before this diffuser plate has to deflect a lot of airflow that needs to go through there. So if we leave all of this area open, we're going to have way too much air that can escape out of it and not flow enough into our radiator. So what I need to do is kind of close this off in some sort of unique fashion. Now I'm just kind of playing around here, just use my imagination a little, I guess. And uh, I took a 45 degree bend, and I'm going to try and sneak it underneath the latch here. And uh, just kind of get an idea of where I want to place it. Nothing too fancy, but I want it to set right next to the tab that we welded on here and sneak right up underneath there. So I'm just going to kind of get a rough idea here. And if I miss on this tube, you know what? Oh well, I can bend up another one. It's no big deal. So we're going to make just like our tube notch video. That's going to be our baseline. There will be our throat line. This is our face line. Of course, the notch lines. So what I'm going to do is go notch this out real quick. And then we'll set it back up and see how close I can get and get this bottom section notched out. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Okay. Quick tack there. Okay, we got both sides set up here. Now what I did do is take a reference line from my uh, center line here, measure outward. So where I had this tube set here was at three and seven eighths of an inch. So I did measure to this side, three and seven eighths inch to the center of this tube, and they were both cut identically. So we have that nice, really cool looking uh, inward uh, bend to match the two sides, and of course, opposing from up here. But all of it looks really good together so we can build our diffuser plate to go over the center this of this. point here, this is where you really need to be like best friends with your tape measure and really trust your marks. 
because we have a lot of radiuses here that are kind of going to be really tricky to get here, okay? So the reason for building this diffuser plate is to deflect and channel as much air as possible into the radiator. Now, I am very inspired by the iHeart Guts' dimple die plates that we have laying around here, so I'm gonna add a few of my own and brand it with my MP tag right in the center of it. So we'll get to that one later. Let's cut this uh, out first. So we're gonna need the general shape of what we're working with. So at the top of each one of these tubes, I'm gonna make a face line here that signifies a top, which is halfway across here. So I already have a couple that are up here. We need to toss in a few for the bottom here. And these will give us some uh, good areas in which we can measure some good reference lines here. So. I know my marker is kind of dying out a little bit. There we go. Some life left in this one. So, some really good reference marks. Now we can start measuring out here. So, at this point here, I'm going to have to kind of follow along this radius up to the point where it meets our center line of this tube here. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Kind of trace this and follow along here. Now, these two points are where these top face lines intersect, that will be the total width of our diffuser plate because we're going to have to cut it along here and make that nice radius. I might change that up in a bit, but for right now, for measuring, our total width for our diffuser plate is going to be 26 and a half inches. Okay? Now we're going to measure from the top of the face line here to the top of the face line in the lower section. This is roughly eight and three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go cut a plate 26 and a half by eight and three quarters. Okay, so we actually have it cut real quick, but we need to figure out how to trace out this radius here. And this is gonna be kind of difficult getting this initial fit right. So I'm gonna take my square here and I'm gonna follow this face line that we made earlier. Now this is gonna give me a really good reference here to start measuring from. Okay, so we have the same lines that we had before. We now, now have our new face line here. I'm going to kind of eyeball this radius here and create a face line on it. Now this is just going to give me a visual reference to help uh, train my eyes on what's actually going on here and where the radius starts and ends and all the rest of that good stuff. So we're going to focus right here at the point of deformation. Somewhere at the point where the tube starts to deform and go into this radius. That's what we're trying to find on here. And we're going to have to give ourselves kind of a, not to say a good guess, but, you know, it's really hard to say within any certain, you know, degree of thousandth of an inch where it starts to deform and whatnot. So we're just going to take a really good look here and kind of come to the point where we can agree and say this is about where it starts to deform. I'm going to measure down here. It looks like somewhere around, let's say right about somewhere in here. I'm going to go for my face line up top. Kind of give myself a decent measurement here. So that's pretty close to the three and a half inch mark. So I'm going to use the three and a half inch mark as my reference line. And on the other side, we'll also go over and measure three and a half inches when we get to that side. So right now, I have a space in here for my rough cut for the diffuser panel to fit in here. I need to measure between here and between here, I already know it's three and a half inches. So there's going to be a section of it that it's not going to be cut out. And that's two and a half inches by three and a half inches. We're going to do the same thing on both sides, and I'll show you how to translate that onto now the we'll actually panel. worry about tracing out our diffuser panel later with the actual radius. So we'll use this as our reference side here. We said we need two and a half inches from the edge to that point where it meets our face line of the radius tube. So two and a half inches in. Let's get our square here. Okay. And three and a half inches down is the point where it stops its point of deformation. So three and a half inches downward. Three and a half here. And it looks like my cut's just a little bit off. So let's put two marks on here to make sure that we actually get it nice and square. Cut was just a little bit crooked, but that's okay. So basically what I'm gonna do, now that I have this reference on here, I'm gonna mark out the other side the exact same way. This section right here is going to stay. And later on we'll actually 
trace out our, our radius for it to actually make it made up to the tube. Now there's a way to actually get that just where we need it. But this whole S section right here gets to go away. So. Uh, just to avoid losing the hardware, we'll just kind of stick it back in there. It's not going to get in the way. Nothing worse than trying to find the hardware while you're sitting there trying to put everything together. And you're like, oh, where did I put those nuts and bolts at? That always sucks. So, let's get our plate in here. Now, here's where we get to the fun part. Just trying to figure out where these notches are going to go for these bumper brackets. So, what we need to do is I'm going to kind of set this in here. And Notice how I have it slightly under the size where I want it to be, and that's so we can have a nice fat weld on the top of it, and a little bit more tube and a little bit less structure here. So I want to make sure that it comes up right to the spot. So we're going to take a measurement from the area before, our three and a half inch mark here. We're going to measure down to the bumper bracket itself, which actually is going to be closer to about where the weld is. So we'll measure down to the weld. Take about a thickness guess on it, and then we'll translate that over onto our piece of sheet metal. So, take a distance here, it looks like three inches. Gets us down to that bracket. Of course, we'll check on this side, same number. So just kind of set this up here. I decided to, let's work on the car, not really on the table, so. marker here. So from our line, three inches. Let's see if we can make that work. Now let's put this up against here. We have it kind of set in place. Let's take a look here where we've got our line. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks like we'll actually clear it. So we'll run this on both sides. Three inches. Now exactly how much needs to come out, that's hard to say. So we'll just uh, kind of eyeball roughly a, well, roughly a quarter inch. We'll start there. Follow that golden rule. You can always take metal away, but you can't necessarily put it back on. Now, how much depth needs to come out? That's the tricky part. We're gonna use our eyes. I'm gonna set this up right about where I have it lined up so it's even on both sides. I'm gonna mark it right here. We'll mark it right here. I'll say about that much needs to come out. How particular does this really need to be? Well, the answer to that one, it really doesn't. It's uh, it's one of those things that's going to be kind of hidden in there. We're going to try and make it as tight as possible, and we're just going to trim little by little until we get it just right. It's going to be a little tricky to get in there, but we'll get it. Okay, so I'm going to get just a little bit sneaky on here. I'm going to send a pilot bit kind of down into roughly where it needs to be. Somewhat of a guess, really. Because if we come in under, we can always chase it back out. With a file or whatever the case is. But the idea here is to try and get a nice radius edge. I'm going to chase it down with a 3 8 drill bit. sides of my carbide just kind of clean it up a little bit that's gonna be a little bit tricky to get in there with a grinder or anything like that so carbide will chase it out pretty nicely now I grab my tin snips here and I'm gonna try and cut the line tangent to that hole that we just cut in there now again, you can come in slightly under and you'll be okay. There's our notch. So we'll do the same thing to this side and go do a fit check. Right, let's see how well it fits here. Well, that's almost right on. 
I'm liking it. I like it a lot. So now we gotta work on this lower radius. Now, I just want to mention though, at the same time, this is not going to be seen. In fact, nothing post hood latch towards the front of it is ever going to be seen. But, of course, no reason to make it look like crap. So let's do take our time and make sure that we have all of this set right where it needs to be. So, I'm going to make a couple of face lines here. Kind of trace along just like we did before. I'm going to make a mark right here. And we'll do our face line again. mark right here. So when we slide our plate over the top of it, take a couple of pony clamps just to kind of hold it in place here. It's kind of tricky to get it just right. Take a moment here to make sure it lines up right where it needs to be and directly where we want it. Translate that line here, translate that line here, take a measurement on both sides. We have an inch and a quarter on both sides, so we're completely squared up and ready. This section right up here is really difficult, but we're just going to kind of kind of wing it here, kind of trace out our radius using our eyes. We're going to do that on both sides. Now it is going to be kind of difficult to get the welder in here and everything else, but we'll get it just right. I'm going to cut this roughly with the snips and then I'll go back and actually hit it with the grinder to get it. See how close we are. Pretty decent. Now this side's going to need to be taken down just a little bit more. This side is almost dead on. So we're doing good so far. Let's take this down a little bit more. I'm going to use the grinder for that one. And then we'll start working on getting the center section cut out. This is going to be the most difficult part. I have it set pretty close to where I want and need it. So I'm going to draw myself some reference lines. These reference lines are exactly where I'm going to put the plate every time I install it back again. So make sure that it lines up just right, right where it needs to be. And you want to do this on all parts. So here, here. Make sure your lines go across here so you know exactly where to line it back up again. And put a couple on the top too. Just to make sure that we get it right back where it needs to be because we're going to have to take this off and put it back on a few times over. I'm going to need my square. I'm going to take this existing center line from earlier. Translate that center line down here. Okay, so now we have some great points of reference that we can actually use here. At the same time, we're going to use these lines that we've created earlier as well. So we're going to try and create a face line on top, straight as possible. So we essentially just made a box. So let's start from the beginning here. What is our distance between here and the base of where the sheet metal is going to sit? Five inches. Let's put our sheet metal back up right where it needs to be on our lines and our marks where we had them earlier. I'm talking exact marks here. At this point, this is where every little nudge, every little minor movement will make a difference on how the panel sits. And if this, if any time is to be picky, it is now. Make sure that you have it set up exactly where it's going to be. So let's work with what we got here. We have a line here, we have our line here. At the top, somewhere in here, at that five inches away, that's exactly how wide we're going to need to cut. We also have a line here, and we have a line here. So let's work with this. 
five inches up. That's how high the bar goes. With that too. Let's use our straight edge here. Square this mark off here. Square this mark off here. Right. Now, this is where it gets tricky. We do have a radius that we need to cut, but it's going to be a lot easier to start working out what that radius is as soon as we get this cut out. So, we're just going to go straight across. This is what we're going to cut out first. Get the center section out, I'm going to use the exact same method I used earlier. Let's me drill a small pilot. And I'll start slicing up with our tin snips. In the famous ways I like to say it, get strong. Alright, let's get it lined right back up again. On all of our reference marks. And we'll take a look here. Well, we're pretty close. We're gonna have to end up cutting this back just a little bit. And of course, we'll start getting working on this radius here. Now, this is kind of the tricky part. What I'm gonna do is go underneath, and try to really get it in there and make the best reference line I can. We're gonna do the same thing on both sides. Now the marker itself cannot actually get to the halfway point on the tube itself. So what I did do when I made those marks there is give a very decent reference line in which I can cut. So at this point here, I can actually cut these lines out right where they're at and still be very, very close to where we need to be. So then we can start cutting back and trimming away with the grinder each little by little each time. So let's get these cut out with the snips and then we'll fit it back on and see how much more we need to go on each side. All right, with that cut out, let's set up once more. As always, keep it right on those lines. Any kind of deviation from that and you're not going to look right. So we're going to borrow our eyeballs for a minute here. We're going to trace back on some of these reference lines here. And let's just actually kind of follow this out a little bit. Kind of see kind of where we land here. Let's have some fun with it. You know, again, at the end of the day, uh, you know, this was, it was a bit of work. I mean, let's not sugarcoat it. It's not like it was ridiculously easy, but it wasn't ridiculously difficult either. I mean, it's just, it's just a piece of sheet metal. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if you sit there and you play around with it and you discover, oh, you know what, I couldn't get it just right, or I could cut too much off, or, you know, my radius is way off, or whatever, you know, just, you know, toss it in the pile and, uh, you know, cut up another one. It definitely won't take as long to do the second one because you've already done it one time, so the second time should be a breeze. So with these marks on here, we'll just uh, trim them out just a little bit more and see how close I get. I want to definitely be careful with these ridiculously sharp edges. I've, uh, I've been caught by them a couple times. And, uh, you know, it's not fun. I have this really big ugly scar on top of my hand because a piece of sheet metal went through one side and out the other. And that was a hospital run. Didn't get any work done that day. It kind of sucked. So, let's get clamped back up again. Double check that we're on our lines once again. Do this, uh, do this a hundred times if you have to. Make sure it's dead on right where it is. I mean, because your final product is right here and everybody's gonna see it every time this hood opens. So make sure you have it set right where it needs to be. And right where we have it here, looks like I'm gonna need to trim down just a little bit on this to get this side to match. And we'll, uh, we'll hit that out with the grinder. And of course, this up top here, this is gonna need a little bit more trimming back. What I'm going to do here, just to try and get it as level as possible and even, is I'm just kind of, kind of eyeball it here. 
because this was not cut straight originally here. So let's just give a good, a good look at where and how much we need to take off of there. And I'm going to do all of this with the grinder itself. And uh, each time we'll just take a little bit off, put a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and we'll get this corner nice and radiused out here, which we originally tried to nail it just right, but you know, it wasn't, it was a little off. So we got it set up just right. And as soon as we uh, attack it with the grinder here, we'll have uh, just about the perfect fit here. So I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. And I'm gonna move on toward these upper radiuses up here. So same story, same process. Just trace it out underneath on both sides. And then of course we'll flip it over and cut it all out. We know that we obviously need to start here, right where our cut terminated and right up to the corner here. And that should be exactly where we're at. So we're just gonna kinda eyeball this and maintain the same distance all the way around that radius. So I'm gonna come in, actually slice it right down the middle here and then we'll go in later and cut it out with the grinder. So. Alrighty, we set back up, everything looks great. So what I'm gonna do here is wipe off all of these marks again and uh, we need to get our sections laid out here about where we're going to cut these dimple dies and drill the holes at so we can stamp them out. Now this is a little bit tricky so again I want to make sure that I get everything all nice and cleaned off and whatnot. I'm um, also the next time I have this apart here I'm going to confirm here that this line is where I wanted it to be and I'm going to definitely hit it with the grinder again and trim this back a little bit just to make sure that it gets nice and even on both sides here because you notice how this side is a little bit higher than this side right here and this is below my initial mark so I am going to go back and run over that real quick but for the rest of it, it seems pretty good. And I like the fit and everything seems to be good to go here. So again, clean all of this off and we'll get it ready for the new measurements uh, that we're gonna use to stamp out our dimple dies. 